Good evening and welcome to the news roundup for Monday the 26th of June. Before we get into the news, please remember to like this video, share your views in the comments and share the video with your family and friends. Teach them! Always make sure the message has reached them! Now for the news in detail. The Kingston Western Police are probing a double murder that occurred in the Arnett Gardens area on Sunday morning. Two men were reportedly shot dead on West Road in the Zimbabwe area of the community sometime after 9. They have been identified as a 20-year-old Jahim Walker, otherwise called Jaja, and a 20-year-old Taji O'Neill Watson, both of Paradise Courts. It is reported that Walker and Watson were reportedly sitting on the premises of a church when armed men approached. The gunmen opened fire hitting both of them. Walker and Watson were rushed to the Kingston Public Hospital where they were pronounced dead on arrival. It is reported that Walker may have been the main target of the attack. It is being alleged that Walker was an affiliate of the Top Sunlight Street Gang and was a target of members of the Bottom Sunlight Street Gang. Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson has ordered a high-level investigation into an incident at the FDR Hotel in Runaway Bay, St. Anne. On Friday morning, a group of at least seven armed men, one carrying an Uzi submachine gun, stormed the hotel and robbed staff and overseas guests. The gunmen tied up a security guard and proceeded to rob the night auditor and the two American visitors from Florida. The night auditor was robbed of Jamaica $19,000 and US $700 along with a cell phone. Shots were fired when the gunmen demanded access to a safe. One of the gunmen, mistakenly perceived as a security personnel, was fired upon by his accomplices in the lobby. Additionally, two armed men intercepted the vehicle of the American visitors upon their arrival at the hotel and demanded their belongings. When one of the Americans resisted, a shot was fired into the ground. The gunmen then fled the hotel. No one was injured in the incident and the police found a spent casing, a live round and the bullet fragments at the scene. Lashara Shah, also known as Duane, was shot and killed while six others were injured after gunmen opened fire following a party in Bridgewater, Westmoreland. The incident occurred around 9.40 a.m at a jerk center where Shaw had hosted a party on Saturday night. Reports are that three men arrived in a white Toyota motor car and upon alighting they started shooting, injuring Shaw and six other community members. The police were called to the scene and the victims were taken to the hospital where Shaw was pronounced dead and the six other individuals were admitted with one in critical condition. Jevon Bashford, also known as Bashi, who has been charged with the attack on Berlium security officers in Albion St. Thomas, is scheduled to appear in the Home Circuit Court on July 7th. During his first court appearance in downtown Kingston, the case file was found to be incomplete, leading to Bashford being remanded in police custody. He faces a total of 14 charges under various laws, including the New Firearms Act and the anti-gang legislation related to the April 29th robbery in St. Thomas. The charges include firearm use in a felony, aggravated robbery, possession of a prohibited weapon, and possession of ammunition. The incident involved a group of men opening fire on beryllium security officers as they were performing maintenance at an ATM, resulting in injuries to a security officer and a bystander. The assailants fled the scene with a bag containing over $100,000. Bashford was arrested during a police operation in Kingston on June 9, where two high-powered rifles and ammunition were seized. He was subsequently interviewed and charged. An investigation is on the way following a fire along Whitcomb Drive on Friday night. The fire completely destroyed a car and partially damaged a home. Unconfirmed reports suggest that the fire may have been caused by an electrical shortage from an electric car plugged in for a recharging in the garage. The exact origin of the fire is still unknown. The Jamaica Fire Brigade responded to the incident with units from York Park and Halfway Tree at around 12.09 am. Firefighters arrived to find a 2022 Mini Cooper car and a section of the home engulfed in flames. Although the fire was eventually brought under control, the car was totally destroyed. 
The installation of closed circuit television cameras has commenced at Brayton Primary and Infant School in Portmore, St. Catherine. This according to Minister of Education and Youth, Favel Williams. Eight cameras have been installed initially with plans to procure an additional eight to address blind spots on the property. The objective is to equip all schools with CCTV cameras to deter and capture perpetrators who arm children, following the abduction and killing of 80-year-old Daniel Rowe. A 20-year-old landscaper has been charged with the murder of a woman whose partially nude body was found with a head wound in Monique St. Anne earlier this month. Ajari Edwards, a resident of Foreman Hill in Money, has been charged with the death of 48-year-old Novelet Chambers, otherwise called Mitzi, of Clapham District in Money. Reports are that an argument developed between Edwards and Chambers after a failed business transaction about 2 a.m. on Friday, June 16th. Residents found Chambers' body lying behind a building in the town at about 6.23 a.m. the same day and alerted the police. Following a probe, Edwards was apprehended by the police hours later. He was charged on Thursday, June 22nd after a question and answer session with the investigators, during which he reportedly confessed to the crime. Edwards' court date is being finalized. The Junction Police in St. Elizabeth are searching for a man who robbed an elderly couple Sunday morning. According to police reports, about 1.40 a.m., the couple aged 76 and 70 was awakened by strange sounds inside the house and saw men standing beside their bed. The men reportedly demanded money and the jewelry. It was further reported that when their demands were not met, the men tied up the couple and searched the house. They stole one gold chain, a gold necklace, four gold bracelets and two cellular phones. The thieves also made off with cash amounting to 49,000 Jamaican dollars and US six dollars. The couple was also robbed of a licensed firearm. They managed to free themselves and raise an alarm. It was discovered that the men gained entrance to the house by cutting and removing a padlock from the grill. In business, Jamaica has gained export market access to several additional countries, allowing for the export of local fruits and grown provisions. Minister of Agriculture, Fisheries and Mining Floyd Green announced that Jamaica can now export pineapples to Barbados and frozen ackee, sour sop, sweet sop, breadfruit, plantain, yam, sweet and Irish potato to the Cayman Islands. Additionally, Jamaica has obtained market access for bananas in Trinidad and Tobago and for June plum and sour sop in the United States. Green emphasized the importance of seizing these opportunities and increasing production to meet the demand in these high-value markets. He encouraged a bullish approach to exports, highlighting the potential for wealth creation in agriculture and Jamaica's capacity to reach international markets despite being a small country. And in sports, Jamaica's 2023 Gold Cup campaign started with a 1-1 draw against the United States on Saturday. Damian Lowe opened the scoring in the 13th minute with a powerful header from a Demari Gray cross. Jamaica failed to extend their lead after Leon Bailey's penalty was saved by goalkeeper Matt Turner. Brandon Vasquez equalized for the US in the 88th minute. And that is it for your news roundup for today. We would appreciate you liking this video, leaving a comment and sharing the video with your family and friends. Have a good evening and see you next time.